I introduce our very first speaker who needs no introduction in India's gaming industry because he's someone who's dedicated to our nation's vision of homegrown entrepreneurship. He, in fact, uh, championed, le championed leveraging technology to make sports fan engagement more exciting and also managed to steer India's gaming industry through uncharted territories. So, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, it's time to invite on stage none other than the CEO and co-founder, Dream11 and Dream Sports and chairman, IAMEI. Let's put that rainy round of applause one more time. Please help me welcome on stage none other than Harsh Jain. Morning, everyone. So, um, I may not be as eloquent, but uh, I'll get kick things kick started this morning. There's a lot of suits here. You know, I just started with, I told my team that this is a gaming event. I don't know why we're wearing blazers, but, um, you know, great to see a full house today. And, you know, from all over the place, we have, I think, the last decade or so, we've seen so many gaming companies come out of India. We've seen this like enormous growth in user base. We've seen so many policies starting to kick in. We've seen so many federations starting to come out. And I'm really happy that for the first time, we have the IMAI coming together and getting the whole industry, policy makers, the industry operators, and representatives of our user base, industry leaders, and regulators all together, bringing all the federations. We have, you know, FIFS, EGF, AIGF, FSAI. We have so many. I think we would run out of alphabets before we run, off, run out of associations. But I'm really happy to have this one event, the IGC, which can bring everyone together. Hopefully, this keeps growing every year and gets everyone together for one common cause, which is to push Indian gaming forward. You know, in the last few years, Indian gaming has grown from strength to strength and has now become 50 crore Indians. I mean, 50 crore, 500 million Indians are now playing games, online games, which is larger than almost every population of every country in the world, barring a couple. It is just staggering to see the kind of penetration that, we, that Indian gaming has had throughout India. Today, I'm happy to say that, you know, when we started out, we started 15 years ago as Dream 11. And it was primarily tier one, then it started penetrating to tier two. Today, out of this 500 million or 50 crore users, 75% is from tier three and rural which means that if you take the top tier one and tier two, which counts for about 88 cities, 75% of our user base comes from outside the top 88 Indian cities. That is the true Bharat. That is where our Indian gamers are coming from and that is who we are building for. That is why we're trying to get the Indian industry, Indian gaming industry regulated and come together to provide this safe, trusted, accountable gaming ecosystem. We've been blessed to have a government that has been pushing <coughs> Startup India, that has been pushing Atmanirbhar Bharat, and Indian gaming is a fantastic example of that. Because we are literally made in India, for Indians, by Indians. And today, we have the largest advantage as a local population. You know, we have vocal for local, right? We, have, we are literally an industry that can design our entire industry's objective just to meet de the domestic demands. And we'll already be the world's largest industry. With all this, we are very happy that we are able to achieve our honorable PM's, help out our honorable PM's vision of a $1 trillion digital economy. And what's helping out even more now in the last few years, which is very heartening to see, is women gamers. Very, for a long time, it is, gaming has been dominated by men. In fact, to a point where even something like fantasy sports, which I can say so for ourselves, has been dominated by men because it's sports, gaming, tech, very stereotypically male. Now, today, 
even Dream 11 has 10 million women playing fantasy sports in our country. And that's been an amazing achievement for us to see. India has now become the world's second largest gaming market in the world with 15 billion game downloads. Unfortunately, we still are only 1% of global gaming revenue. And that is what we must fix now. So far in the last decade, we've got the volumes of users coming in, but now we must build an industry that can monetize those users and actually account for global gaming and put India's name on the map there. This is obviously being helped with tailwinds for growth, which have been provided by the government, like UPI, as well as private operators like Geo, which has just led to a massive expansion in low-cost 5G, in low-cost mobile phones, penetrating the entire India market and increasing digital literacy. The, the government has also helped us a lot by having the AVGC task force making gaming such a core part of its future. We've been seeing gaming develop cutting edge tech and being at the forefront of cutting edge tech, which will help the entire tech ecosystem, not just gaming. And I think it's a very important part that gaming is a way that we can preserve our Indian culture and heritage and pass it on to the next generation through that medium. We not only do that, but gaming provides massive employment to lakhs of people and has been able to get investments worth tens of thousands of crores of FDI and coming more and more coming into our space soon. But I do want to say one thing, that apart from all this, gaming has finally come to a point where it is contributing heavily to the exchequer. Today, with all this prospective tax on the RMG sector as well, Gaming is now going to contribute 10,000 crores of GST tax revenues annually. And 10 to 12,000 crores is going to go up and become 75,000 crores in the next five years. And that's a serious contribution to our tax exchequer in India by gaming. Lastly, I'll talk about the future. With 1,400 gaming companies in India employing lakhs of people, and having thousands of games, there's also going to be the underbelly of gaming, which is a lot of companies that are illegal, a lot of companies that do illegal things, a lot of companies that defraud users, and I want to stand up and get in front of that and say that's going to happen in any industry that grows so fast. Today at IGC, our goal is to stand up and say that for all of y'all, for all of us who are here, as the right operators doing the right things for India, we want regulation. We are one industry that is asking for regulation. Just like the stock market, which had all kinds of operators, maybe 20 years ago or so, it was an untapped force. SEBI, the government was able to have SEBI come in and regulate the stock market, and that unleashed a value for the entire financial industry of India, and now the stock market is the pillar of our economy, of our financial economy. We believe that gaming, gaming's untapped potential can be unleashed by having it regulated, by having oversight by the government who steps in and actually regulates and draws a line which says, this is permissible and this is not. And I'm sure all of us then can pivot completely and do exactly what is permissible and really untap this industry's potential. So we look forward to Honorable uh, MOS, Raji Chandrasekhar, coming in later today. We look forward to all the talks about regulating our industry. And hopefully we will get, in, the in 2024, we will constructively be able to resolve the one other elephant in the room, which is the retrospective tax. We will hopefully get a constructive resolution. And I will still stand by the statement that 2023 has been such an important year for us because we finally have a nodal ministry. We've been here for 15 years and we've been asking for a ministry, for a home for gaming. We have a nodal ministry today. We have allocation of business rules, an IT act, the ministry of IT being able to be our nodal ministry and regulate the sector. We've been able to get clarity on TDS. We've been able to get clarity on GST. 
these are very important objectives that we've been able to achieve which will help us in the long run. And I look forward to just having a safe, trusted, accountable gaming ecosystem. I'll stop here because we have a lot more interesting speakers to follow. And I just want to say thank you for being here. And I look forward to our first edition of IGC. Welcome, everyone.